Hey everybody, it's Cyborg and I'm joined by Temp and today we have Year 5, Issue Number 11. So thanks for tuning in guys, definitely appreciate it. Like the video, subscribe, share it with a friend, do all the things because we love you. We love you, come on. I don't know where I'm going with this so I'm going to continually get weird. Okay. Uh, never going to let you down, never going to give you up. <laughs> never going to let you down. Okay. And... For this issue, like I said, check out the previous ones because don't want to get spoiled. Say that at every episode almost, but it's true. There's some good stuff here. But if you're ready for it, then we're ready for you. So let's get started. We start off in Gotham and we are in an office. Harley is clearly talking to a shrink. She's laying on the couch and she is kind of addressing her feelings. Um... She mentions the pills and she says um, she doesn't see the point in taking them anymore. And she doesn't think about the Joker really anymore, so she doesn't feel the need. We see the silhouette of the person she's talking to. We're not really sure who it is, but um, she goes on and she just explains her feelings. And um, talks about the Joker underground and how... She didn't like the fact that they were using the Joker's name, but they ended up dead anyways because of Superman. So now he want, now she wants to go and kill Superman, of course. Um, she wants to know why he's in power and why are people following him? Why is Why are so little of them on Batman's side from the Justice League? But she wants to go get some answers so she thinks she knows just the fellow who to ask and she thinks the doctor the shrink for shrinking her head <laughs> um, yeah. she says they're the best she grabs her mallet she almost forgets it but she grabs her oversized mallet which she doesn't want to do that because smushing things is always are always makes her feel better and she says toodles as she walks out the door then we pan over to she was speaking with and it's a cardboard standee of her herself in a doctor's <laughs> uniform. I mean, words can't do it justice how silly that thing looks. It is literally just a cardboard standee of herself with a doctor's Staring jacket ever on. so intently. Yeah, she, she has her, yeah, just like, hmm, hmm, oh, you don't say, hmm, interesting, oh, okay. And yeah, there's creepy clown pictures on the wall, but yes, it's hilarious, and sh the stand even has the badge on it, says Dr. H. Quinzel, MD. So I thought this was fantastic, honestly, I really enjoyed that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, then, we, then we cut to the Keystone Saloon, and we see Mirror Master, and um, Mirror Master, and what's her name? Is it, it's not, it's not Livewire, what is, what is hers? Wide? No. I'm always forgetting these names. Let's just call her Lisa, because that, that is her name. That but I, I don't remember her, like, rogue name or whatever. Um, they are mourning the death of Heatwave and Weather Wizard way back when at the hands of Bizarro. They cheers to them. They have their pictures up on the pool table with flowers. And they say they're going to miss them. I like how uh, Heatwave has his picture taken while he's burning shit down. That just... <laughs> yeah, it's almost like <laughs> ominous. Like... <laughs> well, it's, it's ominous in the sense because, I mean, they were like burned to death so <laughs> by heat vision. It's but dark. Yes. But yes. Mark and Mick. But yeah, and then uh, we see them. They're talking. They're not sure where Trickster's at. And they, they assume that he's just too cowardly and laying low. And they they make mention of um, that. Who was the other ones that couldn't make it? It was Captain Boomerang, Captain Cold, Pied Piper, Pied Piper. Are those the three? I think. Well, I don't think they. Mentioned. Yeah, they do mention Captain Cold. Yeah, okay. they do. Um, Anyways, um, they they start talking, uh, and they kind of go in for a kiss, Mirror Master and Lisa, and they you know they just want to make sure that they're there for each other but flash shows up to spoil the party so lisa ends up going to slap him saying that he's just there to kick him while they're down and you have some nerve but he catches her hand and he explains that it wasn't superman it was an imposter that murdered them 
and the details don't matter. The fact is that they died, and I'm truly sorry for that, he says. And then she counters back, saying, you plan to turn us in? He says, no, not today. Whatever differences we've had, I always respected the way the rogues went about their business. And he gives his condolences. So Mirror Master orders them all around, asks him if he has time for one drink red, or he asks him for time for a drink red, and he says just one. They all share a drink together, and we leave off there. So a very decent scene there. Indeed. Between them. Then we cut to Harley and Billy. She shows up on Lobo's motorcycle, and Billy is walking with some friends from school, it looks like. She is swinging her mallet around as she's riding. Like, she just has it up in the air like a crazy lady. <laughs> she looks so funny. <laughs> so crazy. So, so crazy she is. And, yeah, she rides up to Billy, and she she wants him to turn into Shazam so she can smush him with her hammer. He refuses, so she takes out a gun, points it at one of the kids, and she says, turn into Shazam, or the kid gets it. She pulls the trigger, even. She pulls the hammer back, I should say. <laughs> she doesn't pull the trigger. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> Turn into it, Dark. otherwise the kid gets it. <laughs> oh, oops. I wasn't supposed to pull that yet. <laughs> no. She pulls the hammer back. <clears throat> and Billy agrees. So they meet over by the... <clears throat> they meet over by the mall. Turns into Shazam and... Yes, you happy now? As what she wants with him. <clears throat> Until and then she explains, you know, why are you with Superman? He killed um he killed the Joker and he's threatening with nuclear bombs and all of that stuff and also Oh wait no, I got that wrong. He's not threatening with nuclear bombs. <laughs> Superman's not like I There is a nuclear bomb reference, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. He goes Shazam says when this started you were all about the joker and nuclear bombs and you were gonna kill that kid um and then she fires back saying no i wasn't really going to kill the kid which i liked i'm glad she wasn't yeah serious about that i didn't think she was but i thought it was gonna be like a prop gun or some bs like that but she explains at least no she wasn't doing that it was just her trying to get him to go along with what she was wanting done um and that the time with the Joker was just a transitional phase, which I liked as well. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, she that, at this point, yeah, she's really just starting to put the pressure on. Why are you with the regime? She makes mention of the 200 plus people that Superman killed. I guess Shazam's under the assumption that that was an imposter. That wasn't actually Superman that did it. So I wonder if he just mis was misled or if in the news they played it off like it was the imposter, I'm guessing. They just kind of yes. swept that one under the rug and said, yeah, that was the imposter too, totally. Um, <laughs> well, it's very strange because clearly Cyborg knows that it was not the imposter, that it was very much Superman who boiled those people alive from the inside. So. But Cyborg is the one that he was talking to before he oh, yes. did it, so that makes sense. So... Perhaps they just lied to everyone else. Maybe that's what we're getting from here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Plausible. so then they, yeah. Harley hits him with her mallet, and that's when we leave off on the that chapter. Immediately catch back up on, on the next chapter, and she's holding out the green pills, and that explains why she's so strong. So there was no shortage of green pills for her, at least, because she had a bottle of them that she kept for herself. And they fight back and forth. She's filled with the owls, so much owls, and once again, like I said, they keep going the scuffle. This is where she mention, mentions the several deaths. It's late. I'm tired. <laughs> I can't. I'm getting out of order here, but this is where she mentions it, and he, yeah, like you said, he doesn't, he's not under the impression that it was Superman, so she leaves, and she just says, forget you. She gets her hammer, gets on the motorcycle, and leaves. She says, I never liked you anyway. Which I like that she said that, because it's just yeah. crazy Harley. Very emotional. Then we go to Wayne Manor, Gotham. And this is where my butthole puckered just a little bit for Alfred. Because yeah. he is sitting there. <laughs> he is sitting there on the chair, alone. And all of a sudden, the door busts down. Superman shows up, starts questioning Alfred. He basically explains what Damien told him 
and says, oh, that's what you really think of me, huh? And he asks where Bruce is. Alfred won't tell him. He says he doesn't know. And even if he did, he wouldn't tell you, wouldn't tell him anyways. Superman's still putting on the pressure, threatening him even with the glowing eyes, like he's going to just destroy him there on the spot. He wants to end, put an end to the pointless war, so he just wants him to tell him where it is. Alfred says, you know what? I'm getting old. I can't stay up late anymore. He shuts his book. He gets up, and he tells Superman to let himself out. Superman says, get back here. And Alfred says, good night, Master Kemp. Which, throw back to that master line. Way back to Injustice 1, where he says, yeah, we'll see about that when, it was, when Superman told him to not call him Master. And then we see Superman with the glowing eyes, and that's where we leave off. So keep your buttholes tight till the next time we yeah. get follow up on this, because old Alfie might just be uh, another burning corpse. Then we cut, be yeah. Then we cut back to Gotham in the office building. This time Harley is the doctor in uh, being the psychiatrist for the patient, and we're not really sure who she's talking to. She's giving some good advice, and she, you know, gives some soothing words, explaining that, you know, your actions are completely reasonable, why you acted that way with Shazam, and, you know, don't worry about it. So then we pan over to who she's speaking with, and now the cardboard cutout is laying on the couch. <laughs> I thought this was just so good. Like, the cardboard standing. <laughs> that standy is just so priceless. Like, I, if, if this was me, I would have expected... Like, if somebody told me, oh, a standee of Harley Quinn is just laying on the couch, I would have expected it to just be, like, Harley Quinn in her villainous get-up or something like that. Not just, like, this doctor with the, the thinking face going on. Like, it's just so good. Um, so well drawn, too. And so she, like I said, she kind of gives her some soothing words and encouragement and explains that, you know, it's not your fault. And then she gets up. Walks over to the cardboard stand up, puts it in the chair, and then she goes and lays on the couch and then says, Thanks, Doc. You're not so bad yourself. And we see she has a mug on her desk that says, Perhaps you are just crazy. Which, I mean, that's, that's a given at this point. Then we see when we cut to the Himalayas and Batman in his bat plane. Which just sounds like an odd thing to say. But anyways, he <laughs> uh, goes to, he lands on the mountains and he explains to, Oh, you wanted to talk? And the person that he's talking to says, I want to do more than that. I want to help you topple the regime. Batman says, we could definitely use someone with your abilities. But if I allow you to join the insurgency, you have to do what I ask and keep that temper of yours in check. And then we see who it is. And it looks to be Hawkman. And he says, I'll direct it at the ones that deserve my wrath. I promise. What do you want me to do? So a nice little twist there. I didn't see Hawkman coming back into the fold. I figured he'd just be one and done. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's good to see him again, even if he is an asshole. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, they don't write him to be terribly sympathetic. Um, I do want to quickly highlight that uh, Harley has a picture of Lobo in her office. That's yeah, pretty tight. Yeah, it's like in a little frame. Yeah, I did notice and, that uh, as well. Uh, I feel like. Like I said, it's been a long time, but I do not remember Alf Alfred in the game at any point, so... Yeah, I don't remember either, um, and it's been even longer for me. I feel like I remember less from the story mode, but yeah, so who knows? But overall, uh, the issue itself, I thought it was decent. I mean, we had great moments um, with Harley in the beginning where it had that nice reveal because I didn't know who she'd be talking to. I was like, who is she talking to? Like... Who would be giving her, like, who would be listening to her right now? And then, <laughs> like, I expected her to, at, at the very least, be talking to, like, herself. That just girl is what I was thinking, but That yeah. girl would make sense, or her, she just talking to herself. But I did not expect a cardboard cutout or anything <laughs> like that. So that was a great little, fun little uh, reveal. And then the stuff with the Flash was tremendous with the, the robes. Yes. That was, a, that was the highlight of the issue for sure. And then the stuff with Alfred and Harley and Shazam, all of that stuff was pretty solid as well. And it looks like she kind of laid some seeds into um, Shazam's mind, kind of getting him to further question things and potentially reconsider his stance on things. Because I'm sure he's going to ask Superman about that now, so that'll be interesting um, to see where that leads. And yeah, finishing off with 
Harley, once again, on the other side of things this time, which is funny. And Batman recruiting Hawkman. So, interesting stuff. Yeah, indeed. Um, yeah, Harley, you know, when we first started this, I was not looking forward to the Harley segments. I, I, I thought they were going to kind of shoehorn her in. I yeah. didn't think it was going to work as well as it did. But She's she really... hit or miss. She's very hit or miss. And oftentimes these days, I feel like she's very miss. So I think I'm on the same page of you that she like i like the character i know you're not like super into harley but i really I'm fairly like, neutral on harley i really like the character and i was just kind of worried that they would make all of her stuff like very cheesy and not funny feeling very forced i mean she was only had that one forced panel where she was like throwing out the peace sign and trying to be all like weird like yeah you go girl and stuff like that i don't remember the exact one but that was the only moment where I thought, eh, it kind of fell flat. But as you were alluding to, she's been really well done. And, you know, this is one thing, one reason why I'm not as excited for Harley and uh, the new Injustice 2 is I like this design a lot. This is actually my favorite design Harley has ever had. Yeah. Um, it has problems. I mean, she's basically walking around lingerie. <laughs> uh, and they, it, it's not that it looks bad. Quite the contrary, but I think for tastefulness, they should probably clothe her, at least her bottom half a, a bit more, her top half, half a bit more as well. Because I, I, the character does need a little bit more subtlety. I think fighting games have kind of graduated from that phase where they're trying to market via TNA. I think at least uh, most fighting games, I don't think DO, DOA is ever going to graduate from that. But um, <laughs> That's their market. That's their whole yeah, thing. Yeah, that is their niche. <laughs> they tried for a while. They were trying to you know break away, but they kind of fell into bad habits. So, um, yeah. Yeah, no, so I, I I like this design a lot. I'm really sad it's on the new game. Uh, yeah, it doesn't maybe look like in the... gear. It could be in the gear. They're still holding back on a lot of gear, so... Well, an integral part of this design is the hair, so it's possible, but yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know if I've seen any hair gear yet. Well, uh, other characters, I think, have had hair gear. Um, for Harley, we know for a fact one of her gear pieces is her, like, headpiece, so that yeah, I can see the hair kinda. being... A part of stuff like that so yeah Anyways. so um yeah but other than that good issue uh the alfred stuff i'm really looking forward to uh, and more harley stuff too i'm i'm really excited about seeing more harley i like we're, i like we're kind of carrying on to her arc now so yeah yeah i mean we weren't really sure where they were gonna go after bizarro um that whole story arc for the first half of year five and now this was a nice start into the second half i didn't i wasn't sure what they were going to do i was really kind of worried that it was just going to get kind of like oh we have 10 more issues to fill out for the rest of the year and it was just going to be kind of like filler stuff but i didn't feel like this was filler this was still interesting to me it was interesting to see the follow-up with the rogues mourning the loss of you know their partners and the flash mourning them as well i thought was as we said very uh powerful and strong very well done and then the Harley stuff is great to see more of her, of course, because she's one of the strongest points of the series. As you said, she's been written very well. So yeah, very, all around, solid issue again. And the Alfred stuff, keep your buttholes puckered. And uh, on to issue number 12 of Year 5. We will see you guys tomorrow. Peace out, guys.